an amazing run. Real Snow is an X Games competition based on filming urban snowboarding. Urban, or street snowboarding, entails riding anything that you cannot find on a resort or in the backcountry. Typically, these features are in cities. In this event, five riders and their filmers must produce a 90-second video part that will be judged by their peers. All of the riding in the video must be filmed on urban features. The riders will have one and a half months to film and edit their video. After their videos are complete, they will all gather to share a roundtable discussion on urban snowboarding and decide upon a winner. Each rider and filmer will cast an individual vote to determine who will win X Games Gold. We will go behind the scenes with each crew before the results are revealed. The riders in this contest are Dan Breezy, Dylan Thompson, Jeremy Jones, Seb Toots, and Chris Grenier. These are their videos, and this is X Games Real Snow. My name's Dylan Thompson. I'm 27 years old. I'm from Hood River, Oregon, and I currently live in Salt Lake City, Utah. I know when I see his video, it's gonna blow my mind because that guy just goes, he doesn't quit until he can't walk anymore. I've filmed with him before. He's, he, that guy is a straight warrior. Dylan Thompson is, dude, he's just that street slayer. Really good rider, good style. He's a beast. Try to hold still, Dylan. Yeah, so we're just like shoveling, setting up this spot, and all of a sudden there's like gunshots going off, and I was like, literally like didn't know what was going on. I just like hit the deck. Shooting a pretty sick time lapse, but these guys over here are shooting guns. It's gonna be hard to keep them from flinching, probably. Turns out that spot's like pretty much just like a shooting range. Hold still for about five minutes. <laughs> See if he can do it. Me and Cole have been filming together for, yeah, probably seven, eight years now. You gotta be able to trust the people you're around. They need to know how to set stuff up properly. Especially with like the real snow, you're trying to do such gnarly stuff to where it's like, it is pretty dangerous and it's like good to have someone who like, kind of knows what it takes and like how it's all gonna work and to get feedback from someone like that. A lot of times I'm the one that's telling them, yeah, your speed looks right. You know, not, cause I'm down on that ground level where other riders are maybe up top running a winch or a bungee, they don't know. Out of anyone I've had help me like judge speed or set things up, I think Cole like kind of has it the most dialed. So like, honestly, I trust his opinion over even like the other riders. I just depend on him to be there. Like, it's like, if I do a trick, I'm not gonna be like worried, like, well, is it filmed well? Like, I just know that like the filming is gonna be on point. Dylan, he hits such gnarly stuff. I wanna make sure my angles are showing how gnarly they are. Um, a lot of times, I know a lot of people prefer to shoot everything with a wide angle or whatever, but I like to really see the feature and what it is and the distance and, you know, everything that you can in one shot. I feel like editing is pretty easy when you have hammers. What do you really have to do? I mean, the shots speak for themselves, you know, you don't really have a lot of room for lots of cuts and different stuff you'd like to use, or you're gonna have to sacrifice shots, and I just feel like the shot is more worth it than cutting it up too crazy. I think Dylan would like to try to squeeze them all in there, <laughs> yeah. but. <laughs> yeah, I can use everything I can for sure. <laughs> the more the better is kind of like the way I see things. I don't wanna say you're more competing against yourself because you're doing the absolute best stuff you can and you really don't know what anyone else is doing, which is different from like any other kind of competition. I don't really see a point in like worrying about what anyone else is doing. It's like, I'm gonna do the best I can, put out the best, best part I can. And at the end of the day, I'll be happy with that if I gave it my best effort. For me, it's not a competition thing at all. Like, it's just cool that we even still get to do these things and be a part of something that's actually that's this big as well as being super cool you know doing video part contest I mean that's what we've been doing that's all we know so to be able to compete at it at the highest level is an honor it's really cool people see like the X Games and slope style and half pipe and that's what they think snowboarding is and it is a part of snowboarding but I think like to the average kid like Street riding is more relatable because it's something anyone can go out and do. Snowboarding is all he knows and it's what he, he you know, he lives to ride. It's, he breathes it, it's crazy. And it's just his passion and dedication towards getting a shot is unreal. I've never experienced it with, in all my years of filming. 
So I really appreciate that. Preference would be a natural drop in always, but that's pretty hard to come by in the streets these days. Uh, also, the bungee's pretty nice because the speed's really consistent with it, so I like that. But uh, it's also a lot of work for the people. You have to have people actually like pull that back every time, so when it takes you 50 tries to land your trick and you have like your whole crew just like pulling the rubber band back over and over, I think that gets pretty old for people. I'm really into like finding cool spots. Like I'm into architecture and maybe abandoned buildings and just things that we can really allows us to get creative. I've never really been super stoked on just like filming down bars and stuff like that. For me, it's a little bit boring. I mean, I'll, I do it, but I definitely prefer like unique spots. The big stuff that we hit in the streets Definitely takes a lot of work, you know, building a, a big jump if you're doing a big gap. You know, it's not something we like to do. We don't like to have big landings and big jumps, but certain spots, there's no way to hit them without it. So, kind of almost brings the backcountry element into the street. Looks a little mellower at the bottom, but once you get up here, it looks pretty crazy. <laughs> It was really stressful at times, but at the end, like I'm really proud of what we did and we worked really hard, so it's a great opportunity and something I'm really stoked to be a part of. Writer or filmer, editor, whatever, it's like, are you ever really happy? Like, I feel like you always, if you're like always wanting to do better, then you're, you're happy, but you always think you can improve or wish you would have done something or had, we had more light. I mean, there's always things that could have made a shot better, but overall I was pretty happy. My name is Dylan Thompson and this is my Real Snow video. After the break, Dan Breezy hits the streets. I'm Dan Breezy from Richmond, Minnesota. Moved out to Salt Lake City when I was 20 years old, and uh, I snowboard. Yeah, Dan's just gnarly. <laughs> Dan's gnarly. I categorize him in like this Danny Way vibe. You know, Danny Way in skating is kind of where Breezy sits when it comes to their actual doing the sport. Breezy is definitely one of the gnarliest guys in, you know, especially street snowboarding and snowboarding in general. You could see like he's a hard worker, like he built some massive feature and every year, you know, like it's always excited to see his part. I grew up in Minnesota and growing up in Minnesota, we basically had a little hill and rails so all we could ride was you know the city real snow the rules are pretty simple you can start filming whenever it snows you have until january 15th and you need to film a 90 second part with only urban footage real snow's rad it's that contest where you can have just a short amount of time to get your best footage and put it together in one part and that short amount of time with the riders that are involved it pushes the level of snowboarding and myself personally and it actually brings out the best in my riding I feel like. You know Justin and I worked together seven years ago for Pirates Productions and I remember when I worked with them seven years ago it was awesome. You know we got along well and we had similar 
visions and similar stuff we like to hit. So, you know, this year it's kind of like we picked up right where we left off. The difference back then being that we were rolling film. And so on, on this trip it was, you know, different being able to actually review the, the shot and say, okay, like, that looks good or let's take it again. Light, it makes things look so beautiful. It's, uh, it's so necessary. But in these circumstances, you just got to go. You know, it's like we only have two hours of daylight left. It's foggy, whatever. We have to do this because then we got to move on to the next thing. Justin is a very, very focused guy. He's a perfectionist. My goal is always to tell a story about the, the spots and what, what happened, you know, whether we got the trick or not. Dude, nice. These hats are looking legit. Need some Santa hats for the uh, Christmas session tomorrow. You know what I mean? Just a little Christmas cheer. I'll just spread the holiday cheer on Christmas. It's our own personal Christmas tree right here at the spot. Usually this thing is horsepower, but today we got reindeer power, boys. I mean, there was a lot of times this year when I get done with the spot, I'm pretty over it. I want to be done and put, take my boots off and you know he's got me going over and over again trying to get these cut shots. I try to you know develop a um, little background for the spot you know show the whole thing show some tighter details. I was a little frustrated to be honest right out of the gate but then he started to show me the footage and I was like oh, okay that's why we're doing it that's why it's done over and over again and and after that I was like well let's just keep doing it until you're totally satisfied. Dan totally lets me do my thing and, and respects my eye as a cinematographer but I appreciate Dan's input always. I really like this angle out here and I feel like a little further away looser might make it look bigger. You know when any rider is stepping up to the plate in that manner you want to make sure you give the viewer and the rider you know that that feeling what it actually felt like to to do that trick. In my opinion, the, my best results are achieved when I work together with the rider to, to to make a shot. A big part of these bigger features is setting them up properly. It's a feeling you get. You look at a feature and you're like, I want this spot in my part. That feeling inside when you look at something is kind of the deciding factor of, hey, do I go for this or not? Some of it's you're looking for the spot, and sometimes you're looking for a specific trick, and it's just such an adventure, you know? There's no set like, hey, we're gonna hit these spots for sure because the snow kind of dictates it all. So it's just going out and, and having fun and, and doing what makes you happy. I said it before and I'll say it again. It just comes down to the crew. It comes down to the dudes all coming together and working together for uh, one goal. And without that, you you don't have anything. We gotta get this shot, right? Cause you gotta fight the catch. Yeah, 5.30 flight. You know, it's desperate times when I have a shovel. It's more just snowboarding for your, to make your best part that you can make. At least that's that's how I've been viewing it the last couple of years is to try to make the best part I can actually make for myself. And you know, if it's a part that is one of the top parts, that's really sick. If it's not, you tried your hardest and you've got no regrets. There's always a way to, to bump it up. And I think that's why snowboard videos work. You know, there's always this room for improvement. I think that's one of the reasons we always just keep going season after season and day after day we're like the next spot when you're filming and editing and then scrutinizing your part down to 90 seconds you see a lot of those little things that you're like oh that was just tweaked a little bit yeah that's this shot looks perfect yeah I, I like the style on that one dude I'm so glad it's finally over you know just to be able to get away from Justin and move on <laughs> I had it written in my contract that he couldn't bash a shovel over my head or or uh, verbally abused me, so he had to keep himself in check. None of this is true. We got along great the whole time. I think one of the reasons why this profession works for me is because I'm rarely satisfied. I are, as soon as we had it cut and I had a day to breathe, I almost wanted to go back and do it again. I'm honored to be a part of it and, and just, to, yeah, just to have my work viewed in this, um, in these circumstances. You know, the filming, the editing, the music, I just like it all. I'm excited to share what we got done with the other crews and I'm equally as excited to see what they got. It's been killing me. I really like the footage we got. I, I like the spots we hit. I like some of the tricks that I got this year. Um, I just appreciate the crew's help so much, you know, like, Justin Hare, Dan Tyler, Josh Molitor, all those guys putting day after day of work in. Not to mention Drew Paganski and Krister and Bjorn. I mean, there's just a ton of people coming together to make this part happen, and I just want to say thanks. I'm Dan Breezy, and this is my real snow part.
Up next, Seb 2s. What's up guys, I'm Sebastian Toutin. I'm known as Seb Toots. I'm a professional snowboarder from Montreal, Canada. For me, like living close to Montreal, you know, it's like it's the perfect town, you know, for me to just uh, explore it and then just like yeah, hit it and see different stuff. He comes in with just a massive bag of tricks. I've seen a few parts from his in the streets and they're pretty insane. I'm sure he did some crazy stuff in the streets. Seb Toots, he's just that contest guy that can literally do every trick. It's two different side contests and filming. Like, uh, contest for me, you know, like it, there's a lot of pressure. Like, you need to be, you need to land your run, you know, that day at that moment. It's a cool way to just keep up with your level of riding. But I feel like filming is just like an, an, another side, you know, like filming is just like you see things differently. I don't feel like real snow is a contest, I just kind of feel like I'm just putting out there all my best and then just see like, I would just want all the riders to be stoked on what I did. But I feel like real snow, you're, it, it's, there's so much possibility, like you can show like so much more like variety and different feature. You don't have like a, a path to follow. You, know? you just kind of do whatever you think it's cool. I know Matthew like since I'm 12 years old like my first part what is in, in his movie called Montreal. We film together but like in a normal day in life like we go play golf together. We are, we're always like trying to just like you know just <laughs> just Fighting a little Usually bit. it's like, you can't even do nose press. Like, come on, bro. Like, I know you can't do nose press. <laughs> so, like, it's, it it's, gets me mad if I got to do it. Like, I'm like, dude, that was a nose press. No, <laughs> that was not. I, your board was that high, man, from the rail. That's not a good nose press, man. Yeah. Watch the whole movie. Like, GP Walker back in the days, this nose press was way better than yours, man. <laughs> They're good at 50-50, no press for you, bro. Okay, next time I'll film, you go. Okay, no problem, I'll do a comeback. <laughs> Pretty much how it is like, on the trip. And sometimes what I do, it's like I just don't say anything. That's the best, you know, you just no. keep talking. You, you always know. say something. We got a guy back home, it's called Pepe, and he's like one of the help crew. Oh, that's Pepe Pro Model. <laughs> <laughs> Pepe is the man. His actual full name is David Perrin. We're a small crew, but we really know what we have to do, and I think that that's been like the special, like special way to get shot faster, and uh, it's been working out. Hey, hey, hey! When it's time to wake up in the morning, wake up. Hey, when it's time to film, film. I always film. There is not really concept. I think I'm just used to film street anyway. Like I pretty much started snowboarding by hitting down rails that in the city of Montreal. When I film street, it just feel just natural. I don't have any plan or whatever. It just just try to make the, the rails look good and it's all about what Seb does. Yeah. You laugh about like Dauphin back in the day, you look at the video, holy smash, it's yeah, the wall. Even like the shiny light, like, hit it there, yeah. keep going. Yeah, but, it's big though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good for the lady. All I want is just to have like some, some tech rail, I want it to have some big features, some Miller flips, um, some flips in, flips out, you know, like trying to put the progression, but at some point like I want it to follow like where everything started, you know, because like back then, you know, like there's no winch. The possibility was not as big as we have right now. So uh, for me, like, that was really important to have some rails and kink because I think that's that's where everything started. Yeah, Matthew's filming is, uh, it's really like Hollywood style, you know. With everything you shoot from snowboarding to anything else, you shoot a lot of stuff from like just beauty stuff. So I could really see it in his in his filming, you know, and I really like that. I just feel like it makes the shot even better. Usually uh, I shoot the shot during the day, after that come back home, do the color correction right, right away, put it on the timeline. When we got all the shot, you know, all together and we knew that was done, it was pretty easy to edit it. 
we sat down all together and then we decided like to move a couple shots here and there but like the whole thing was already like pretty much it it my goal is just to get people excited to go snowboard you know like to get to maybe like help them to have new ideas of new tricks or uh I just want them to get stoked when they watch it. I just want like people look at it and see that Seb is not only like a jump rider, he can ride rails, but not a lot of people know that he's like a street rider too. I'm Seb Toots, this is my real snow park with some film. I mean, I could do a follow. I could do a follow. A follow can? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I think I think so. Mm, not mm. sure about that. Yeah. You don't know how to write, so how can you do a follow cam? I don't know. I don't You're know. never stable on your board. You're always like. <laughs> <laughs> on deck, Chris Grenier. Chris Gunny coming in hot. I grew up in Massachusetts riding really small hills and just riding rails and stuff. And to be a part of this X Games thing is pretty awesome. Chris Grenier is a guy that's got incredibly good style and he's got an incredibly good personality. I really like his style, he's such a good rider. Yeah, I'm really stoked to see Chris's video. I really like the kind of snowboarding he does. Just has the rail stuff, has the feature stuff, good style, good street style. I got the email to do real snow, and then there wasn't any snow in the city, so I had this idea to board slide this rack. The first trick I did, I caught my toe edge. Oh! Okay. Did I really hook on a boardy? Full edge hook to fronty. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you remember it? I do not remember anything. Just I'm going for a real snow. Skewer. Day one. Day one. Oh. Oh no, dude. Am I going for real snow? Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm doing with you. Yeah. Bodie doing it? Why isn't he doing it? <laughs> you win some, you lose some. We live to fight another day. That's all that really matters. When in doubt, use brute force. <laughs> Pat did a really good job in, in um, capturing my snowboarding as a whole. I mean, I remember getting home and looking at some of the stuff on the computer and being like, geez, that uh, looks a lot better than it even felt. So uh, he did as good a job as you can do with that. Just try to do the best job that I can with all the challenges of weather and weight of gear and you know the responsibilities we have and keeping stuff together in the streets. I had a blast shooting with Chris. It was super fun, pretty, pretty entertaining. Yo, you ever heard the Rough Riders? We're the Roof Riders, dog. <laughs> That's what we do. What, you thought Jimmy D the Ripper wouldn't leave you with any two-stroke action? <laughs> Pack her right down. Make sure it's fast. I've always taken snowboarding pretty lighthearted, I'd say, and tried to go out there. I mean, you're snowboarding. You're having fun with your friends. At a certain point in time, maybe it feels like a job, but you got to enjoy every mo moment of it when you're making a living riding a snowboard down a hill. My main thing was just because it was on TV and the, the this is going to be a, 
a more mainstream event, I still didn't want to change the integrity of my snowboarding. So I, would, I just stuck to, stuck to the stuff I like to watch and the stuff I like to do. We're kind of working together to create this thing that is like the vision of an excellent part. And I definitely tried to make the video to tailor like Chris's style. Having a month and a half window to film a minute and a half long video part was very stressful. We normally have all winter, which is five months to film a video part. It's two and a half minutes. So there's a lot of times when you normally wouldn't even do something because the weather's so bad or the snow conditions aren't good, but you just have to step up and get it done because because the time crunch. It brings out the best in you, but it also, there's peaks and valleys where you're put so much pressure on yourself you can get a uh, you can kind of stress out and lose it yeah there definitely is a lot of pressure like you can't you can't miss it you know it could be 50 or 100 tries and there's like that one two seconds in a 12-hour day that you you can't miss and there's a lot going on out there filming a video part that's to be judged for a competition is completely uh, a new thing to me I never actually thought about comparing my snowboarding to another person's on that level and the one thing with snowboarding that makes it difficult is it's not like gymnastics or anything else where there's tricks or worse set points. It's completely opinion based. Creating films is you know purely art. It's like painting a picture or taking a photograph. You can look at something filmed one way and you, you can look at something filmed the other and it changes a lot about how you interpret that trick or the impact it has. My goal in shooting snowboarding is to find that feeling or like pinpoint that snowboarder's personality and make it really seem like them. Just try and tell that story the best I can. It hasn't been snowing uh, much in North America, so we decided to hop on a plane and fly to Japan. I think coming to Japan is something magical about it. Filming the tricks is, is a, obviously a big part of it, but the experience of traveling and eating different food and language barriers and trying to figure out the weather's um, like, is it gonna snow today? Basically, it starts snowing like as soon as you start strapping into snowboard to film your trick, it just starts nuking snow. They got these weird sprinklers they put on the road instead of plowing. It's kind of strange. The editing was pretty much all Pat. You know, he'd just send over some rough edits. Because and... I was sort of editing as we went. A lot of stuff on plans. I mean, I'm stoked on how it looks. And... Yeah, I think we did the best we could. He nailed it. You know? <laughs> he nailed it on the editing. I tried my hardest. I know he tried his <laughs> hardest. So I think uh, that's the best you can ask for, you know? It's a really good feeling to think of a trick that you've never done before or seen anyone do before and then go to a spot and and be able to do it and like have it work out is just like unbelievable. It's like what we do this stuff for because, I mean, the moment you do the same stuff over and over again and you're totally predictable is the moment you might as well not be a sponsored snowboard anymore. How's it going? This is Chris Grenier. Uh, my real snow part is about to play and uh, we work pretty hard on it so hope you enjoy it. Yeah, it looks good. It sounds weird, but sometimes I don't mind slamming. Oh, no. Okay, that's as bad as it can be. Oh, no. 
I just did the worst thing. Oh, no. Now I'm not scared about it. Yeah, then I don't mind it. When you're scared of falling, it'll paralyze you. Oh. Yeah, I do slam. I mean, it's part of it. I'm okay with slam sections. I like the slam section. If you want to ride like lightning, you gotta crash like thunder. So, <laughs> thought you should know that. When we return, snowboarding legend Jeremy Jones. My name is Jeremy Jones. I'm from Farmington, Utah. Live in Sandy, Utah now. Uh, been a professional snowboarder for. Uh, 20 and a little bit of change years. Jeremy Jones, dude, he's just a straight up legend. You know, he's been around forever. He was at the top when I was a little kid in high school and he's still at the top. He's helped make urban snowboarding what it is today. I was a little kid, the first snowboard video I ever watched was The Resistance, so, so I've literally looked up to that guy since my first day. For me, like, growing up as a small kid, like, he's, he's a big legend, you know? Like, it's really rad to, actually be part of a contest that Jeremy Jones is part of it. Obviously, I've always looked up to Jeremy Jones since I was a kid. The guy is out there and he hasn't slowed down a bit. Real snow to me, I love it. I wish I could get in that mindset every single year because you go so much harder without even realizing it because you're just, you're chasing what you feel like your edit can be and you're chasing it on a clock. I try to do whatever I can to make shots more unique, more dynamic. I try to make them look different. My gear is extremely heavy. Um, that's the fun part, but the imaging is incredible. Being able to put the camera wherever you want and being able to rotate around a feature is, is one of the best parts because the viewer is in the scene almost. I've been 20 years with out missing a season uh, delivering a video part. So that's like, that's how long I've been doing it. And yeah, it's, I mean, I love it. I just think if you love it and you can keep yourself from just shattering into pieces, then there's no reason that, it, that you just can't do this as long as you can. Ooh. Sick. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty good. I crop in. <laughs> I grew up watching Mac Dog movies, watching uh, Stander movies, watching the Forum movies, like when all those came out. And, um, you know, I grew up watching Jeremy. Being a total snowboard nerd as a kid, and then growing up, getting the opportunity to work with a guy like Jeremy, was it was insane. The guy's such a professional. He's so good. He uh, works so hard. To take me and a filmer, and a, a buddy and shovel up something in the middle of the night and light it up and just be on our own grind. That's just, uh, it's awesome. And that's what Real Snow is. It offers that up for me. And, and, and to be back a third time is, is something special. And I'm, I'm stoked on the new format now, so I'm excited to see how it plays out. Having the rider judge format seems smart because everybody's gonna wanna watch it, judge it kinda in the for the right reasons. Not for the reason of like, oh, that guy's the coolest, but more or less for, oh, that was a really cool video, that was a cool concept, that was amazing snowboarding. So yeah, moving into this real snow is a little unique because the sponsor I had been with for years just decided they weren't gonna resign me. Now I don't have travel budget, you know, I don't have uh, 
income basically. And so I had to chisel a bit to figure that out. And so it was, it was a new grind, you know, this year for the real snow. It was the same on the film and the, and the snowboarding side, which is something that I love and, and that I talked about, but to, you know, kind of, uh, to ask my family, I guess, to run through it with me was was a different different aspect, something I hadn't dealt with in, in you know twenty years, and certainly not the ten that I've had the kids kids around and that responsibility as a dad. So to have their blessing in it, I guess, is is worth more than than uh, any sponsor that I lost. You know, this guy has been in the game forever, but yet he's still filming the most progressive snowboarding out there. He's still in the game with the 22 year old kids and you know, he's near double their age. I built the concept off of like, how far back can we show Jeremy's evolution inside of snowboarding? With Jeremy being sponsorless right now, I wanted to make it known that like, how much he's done in snowboarding. And I felt the way to do that was to clip through all the pro models. I wanted to take it all the way back to his first forum pro model board. What changeover are we on? Change one. From the car to the rail, we call it the second rail and the double line, is a reverse chronological order of all my pro models, essentially. And, uh, and so it's just shuttling through the graphics. And then the last shot is my very first pro model that I had with with forum snowboards and he just he came through man like awesome idea for the intro he definitely brought his a game to the table so nothing but props this project the thing that i'm almost most happy about was just the opportunity to to work with jeremy whether it turned out great or whether people liked it or whether it does well at the contest just the chance to like film with a guy like that 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 was like that's the thing in terms of my previous real snows, it's my favorite, for sure. Um, in terms of projects I've worked on, top five, for sure. You know, and it could be the, the internal emotion stuff that draws a lot of that out of me. I don't know how other people will view it, but you know, I felt good on my snowboard. I checked out of all the bull crap and, and focused on this, and I had a good, a good filmer, and uh, we're proud of this one. We're stoked. My name is Jeremy Jones, and this is my real snow part. Up next, the riders and filmers will determine who deserves X Games Real Snow Gold. With the filming and editing complete, the crews arrive in Reno, Nevada to view each other's videos and place their votes for X Games results. On the roof of the Nevada Museum of Art, Chris Gunny Gunnarsson welcomes the riders and the filmers. Welcome to Reno, Nevada, guys, and thank you all for being a part of this year's X Games Real Snow. 
Over the next couple of days, we're gonna do a few things. You guys will get a chance for the first time to check each other's part out, see what you've been working on. We're gonna have a round table discussion, and then we're gonna go to the voting process to determine who's gonna take home this year's X Games Real Snow Gold Medal. So right now, let's take it down to the theater and check out each other's parts you guys have all been working so hard on. Let's do this. It's just like the opening process. That was sick. I just got banged over the head with like 70 hammers. The riders leave the theater with flash drives containing the videos. They spend the evening analyzing them and arrive the next morning at Snow Park Technologies headquarters in Verdi, Nevada. So, let's get into it, let's have a conversation, and let's talk about what it was like putting together your parts and how we're gonna settle on something that's so subjective. Whatever decision led you to choose street snowboarding over other aspects of snowboarding. Street snowboarding is like what we've been obsessing about since we were kids. It's what we think about before you go to bed and filming tricks is what we do. In the street there's no rules, you know, you kind of do whatever you want. Yeah, coming out of Minnesota, it's just kind of what we ended up having in front of us. It's always been the streets for me. I mean, powder is great, but the streets are just where you can make it happen. What makes a great video part, in your opinion? I think for me, it's you have a little bit of everything, you know? Yeah, I like to see like a lot of variety and creativity. To me, it doesn't really matter like how many spins or like what technically is better. It's like when you see it and you like catch a feeling in your gut that it, it was really strong or powerful or makes you want to go snowboarding. I mean, I think that's the point of making snowboard videos. Almost like a like finesse and the overall look of a trick as opposed to the technicality of a trick. Like, a, you know, for example, Dan's just, it's a roof, an A-frame, and he just does a big shifty over it, and it's just looked sick, you know? And whatever you watch that it's good, you, you watch it back and forth, you know? Like, you watch it, like, ten times, you know? And to really, like, truly understand whatever, like, happened in that video, and I think, like, if you watch it once and you're already over it, like, watching it, that means, you know, you didn't get that feeling. Story is huge. So whatever, whether it's visual story, narrative story, or however it's delivered, through personality or, or, or visuals, it's, that's what makes a good video part. When you were watching the other guy's parts, what were the things that stoked you out? When I watched it last year, I feel like Bodhi was the, like he had the most insane part and he, it was kind of, you could pick him to win. I was watching all these last night. I couldn't figure out who, it could really, anyone can take, anyone could take it. it for, if you look at it from a different standpoint, each standpoint, everyone, could easily win. I was stoked to see Jeremy put it down so hard. Yeah. After that many years, like the legend just throwing down, it's tight, man. Thanks, dog. Even filming wise, I was surprised. Like every shot was like number one. Like every filmer like did like a super great job. I was amazed. Yeah, every year with Real Snow, these parts come out and you have an idea of what they're gonna be. And every year they're way beyond what you thought. And you're just like, dude, how is this happening every year? So. I would have paid, I, I don't know what I would have paid to get a sneak peek at the edits beforehand, but I was just, I, I think Dan too, we both spent a lot of time wondering like, okay, like what, what else has been go going on out there? Well, you and, leave it up to the photographers, they like to do that. <laughs> With the real snow stuff, every year it's new tricks. Every year it's pushing snowboarding so far that that is the forefront or that's what's pushing snowboarding. And that excitement of yeah, like yeah. watching something like is there for the real snow and it's yeah. not there for a lot of other stuff. Exactly. Most of the time you get to like check it out, fill it out, learn a trick. A lot of times we're learning tricks on film and you get to clean it up and you get to still bring in so much of what probably got most of us into snowboarding was the way it looked and how, how much style it, it can have and all the different styles of people. and in the street and in that filming environment, you get to see like people's natural style. So some great discussion here. We've talked about what everybody did to put in, you know, a, an incredible amount of effort into each part. And so before we get into the actual voting process, which we're gonna go do in the gym factory out back, we're gonna have everybody break into groups, rider and filmer, and start really discussing kind of what you saw, what you liked, and how you're gonna lay down these votes. The pacing on this one was so good, I don't know. I agree there. They're all so good. It's really hard to pick. Dude, I just want to see good style. Yeah, his style is pretty on point. Yeah. I mean, it really comes down to your personal taste, but I think I figured out who I'm going to go with. I think so too. Shall we? Let's go vote. Let's do this. 
Oh, it's hard to even write it. Seal the deal. Whew. Each one of these votes is by like inches. It's really hard to make those decisions. And I need to write it down. <laughs> there you go. You need to think this through a little bit. Before I announce the winner, I just have to say it was an incredibly tight, tight vote. You guys were the ones that voted. So without further ado, this year's X Games Real Snow gold medalist goes to Chris Grenier. What? Oh my God, dude. Put some hardware on, dude. Put some hardware on. Oh it takes two to tango, so let's not forget Pat Fenelon, Mac Dog, do the honors. Congratulations. Thank you. Great work. Oh Thank my you. God. Thank you so much. You, uh, you polished the turd, bud. You got the turd polish out and made me look good somehow. Oh, camera magic. Just unbelievable. Couldn't be more psyched, but I also kind of feel like everyone else has sort of yeah. deserved this. Everyone should basically have one of these with the insane footage they put out. It was like, in a way, I almost feel a little bit guilty because they were all so <laughs> Seriously, good. Seriously, like, it no. just. It's insane.